Gus Biller, uh, and um, we are actually going to uh, begin a new series of actually walking through the Bible, uh, and so uh, we encourage you as much as you're able to be with us to continue to do so, because at the end of our study, kind of whether a year or two, you would have gone through the Bible. So that's kind of neat to actually know. And so tonight our study is going to be on God's good world. God made this world, and we've been talking about this, um, you know, for the past um, couple of months as we focus on the New Testament, that God is good, and um, we know that uh, we live in an evil world, a sinful world, it's still God's world. God made this world, and he has never abandoned the, you know, this world, even though we know uh, that things are not uh, you know, the way they ought to be. Uh, but we can still praise God for the things, the beauty of creation, and, uh, and the good that we see around us, even in the midst of all the evil that you know surrounds us and so that is something to kind of you know rejoice uh, uh you know over and so if you look at the introduction just let me read through that uh and then we will uh, focus on uh, genesis and then uh, uh pastor mike will conclude with um you know just a few verses from you know, colossians chapter one god's love and act of creation is the first big chapter in the story of the bible at the beginning of the bible we see God the Creator at work, creating everything by the power of His Word, the spoken Word. For the Bible says that He spoke and it came to be. And so, you know, God's Word is creative, and God's Word is also, you know, powerful to uh, heal us and to do all kinds of things, you know, for us. God created everything good. And what did God do after creation? He put us, man, in kind of, you know, man and woman. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are the crowning out of his creation. And what God charged us with, this kind of, uh, you know, divine responsibility to take care of his creation, use the raw materials that God has, you know, created to cultivate, uh, and, you know, and then, of course, to um, you know, grow the you know the world, to use the world in a way that is good and healthy, and we can pass it on to posterity, and of course, all of that for the glory of God. So, we've been blessed by God. God has put us in this beautiful world, and God wants us to enjoy the beauty of His creation, but also He wants us to be responsible and to be accountable to Him. And so, as we transition from the Book of Genesis. Uh, we go to the book of you know, you know, Colossians, and there we will see that all of creation is about Jesus Christ. And uh, again, we will kind of um, uh, look at John's gospel, you know, uh, one or two chapters there, as Pastor Mike uh, opens God's word for us. Jesus is the center of creation, and Jesus actually holds creation together. In fact, if Jesus were to leave, you know, this world, everything would fall apart and disintegrate. Yeah. And, you know, we, we will obviously be the you know, losers. And so it's really good for us that we serve a God who is still in charge of his creation. Uh, uh, and the good thing is that even though this world is messed up, one day, and we talked about this uh, you know, previous uh, you know, weeks ago, Jesus will return and uh, he will restore this world to its Edenic you know, glory. The Eden that was lost will be Eden restored paradise that was lost because of sin will be paradise you know restored and we will be with our lord and savior forever and ever and so with that let's turn to genesis chapter one and i'm going to ask somebody to read um, chapter one verses one to thirteen let's just read through all of that chapter one verses one through thirteen and um and then i will just read uh, verse 31 to conclude uh, our discussion. So, anybody who is ready? Okay, yeah, Roger, please. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Hmm. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Mm. And there was evening, and there was morning, 
the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it, and it was so. God, God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered at one place, or to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry land, dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to the various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and tree bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. <laughs> you know, as you read through this, and when you go home, you can actually, thank you, Roger, you can actually read through the whole of the creation account, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Uh, but just kind of to give us, uh, you know, some sort of uh, idea of what we're talking about you know, tonight, this passage is really giving us something that is very important for us as believers to actually understand and to embrace, that God is the creator. God made the world. And so, really, when you look at the very first statement, and we're going to actually kind of uh, dissect it or, or, or try and, 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 and look at this um, you know, by way of analysis, and you see the beauty of what, what we've just read. The very first opening statement, in the <coughs> beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Was it uh, Armstrong when he went into the moon and uh, he planted the American flag? And I think, you know, he said God created or something else. Or, you know, he made some sort of you know, pronouncement. You know, God's creation is something that we, it's incontrovertible. We cannot, you know, disprove it, even though we, we, we try to do it. But the very first statement is really interesting because if you look at it in the Hebrew language, there are seven words. And um, Bible students have been able to really identify some seven important or vital you know, truths about these you know, seven words. And so let me just uh, you know, take you through as you have it in your notes there. Um, the um, open verse, in the beginning God created the heavens and the, and the earth, establishes seven key you know, truths upon which the rest of the Bible is based. Number one, God exists. In fact, Philosophers use the word God is. In other words, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. God is, you know, the verb to be. God is. When we say God is, it means He exists. And so we cannot fathom, we cannot try to capture with our finite mortal minds, you know, this thing about God's existence. There's no way we can do that. And so it's, it's a little bit of an insult. I like, the, I like, to, the, I like the idea that it yeah. doesn't say. Uh, and God's beginning, <laughs> right? <laughs> because in the beginning, God was already there, and that's what you're talking about. Absolutely, He doesn't. He He, he didn't start right. at the beginning. In the beginning, our beginning, yeah. God, He was there. Yeah. He created heaven and the earth. Yeah. You know, He was first. Mm -hmm. He is the the Alpha. He's the right. beginning. He's in the beginning. God. Right. And I and I and I think that's important for us to see. Uh, you know, uh, again, just to add to what Pastor Mike you said, um, it's kind of interesting to actually observe that in, in the um, author of, of the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, something that we all know very well, uh, and verse 6 actually um, says something about this, you know, uh, you know, God exists. And so this is a very important first step in pleasing God to acknowledge God's existence. If we don't acknowledge that God exists, there's a problem. You know, I think we've talked about this. One of the things that has caused some difficulty in our world is trying to put ourselves, creation, in the place of the creator. Mm -hmm. You know, new age movement and all of that, we are little gods, you know, in some kind of, kind of way. Uh, not 
necessarily we are made in the image of God, but we are not God. And so if we want to please God, we've got to accept this very important but simple truth that God exists. God is. In fact, Hebrews 11 and verse 6 says something which is very important. It says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to God must believe, and here we go, that he exists, and that he rewards those who diligently or earnestly seek him. So the first thing that we all need to embrace and to accept when we come to you know to God as believers is that God is, God exists. It's an incontrovertible fact, and we cannot you know dispute that. So that's number one. In fact, the same statement in in, in Genesis one and verse one also uh, brings out another important point that God exists before there was even a universe. Right. It's what Pastor Mike just uh, you know said. Before there was an you know universe. God was. And in fact, after this, this universe is no more, God will still be. Right. And so that really tells us something very important about God. He has no beginning. He has no end. We talk about time and space, but God, you know, is beyond all of that, beyond time and beyond space. And so God exists. He is. Secondly, you know, before this universe came into being, there was God. And when this universe kind of, you know, perishes or goes away or God, you know, remakes it, it's, you know, God is still going to be there. And in fact, uh, in, uh, again, let me read from Hebrews uh, because Hebrews actually gives us some very interesting uh, uh, explanation and, and observation about some of these things. In Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 10 to 12. Just let me read this to your hearing. He also says, this is actually talking about, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, as the author begins to, uh, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, and here we go, but you, do what? Remain. And so, the universe, as the book of Revelation says, will be kind of, you know, rolled away, but God will remain. And so God is not going to, you know, part, you know kind of, uh, you know, just roll out of uh, this universe as some people will, you know, would like us to understand. God is. He exists. He made this world. And because he made this world, God will continue to be in this world. Number three, God is the main character in the Bible. And so when the book of Genesis begins in the beginning God is really very instructive in the beginning God you see God is is going to be the main character through both the Old and the New Testament everything is subsumed under God God is the overarching theme he is everything he's everywhere through scripture you you know you if you take God out everything disintegrates breaks down because God is the driving force. in fact you can actually call God just using the, the human term, you know, the protagonist. He is the main character. He is the main force. He is the main, um, you know, creator in, in this. In fact, he is the subject of the first action verb in the Bible, creation. Because, you know, God created. And so even before there was any action, God was already there. And God was already, you know, doing stuff. And so that's really important, you know, you know for us to, 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 to uh, you know, uh, understand. Number four, as creator, God has done what no human could ever do. Let me pause on this because I want to elicit some response. You know, God is the one who does things that none of us. You see, we have the capacity to bring things into existence because we're made in the image of God. You know, we are the crowning out of God's creation. Medical science, for example. Thank God for our doctors and medical team that, you know, have studied and are able to, you know, really help us when we go there with some kind of fault in our system because we are made in God's image. They're crowning out of God's you know, creation. And so we have that capacity to do something that is good. Uh, but you see, God is the one who is above all of us. And so when we look at the, that Hebrew word, 
In the beginning, God created. That word, to create, it has no human subject. In the beginning, bara. In the beginning, creation came about. Not by you know any human being, but by God. And so that's why God is actually placed right there. And this is a very important word for us to understand. In the beginning, God created. And so this word creation in the realm of the divine signifies something that is uniquely God. Only God creates. Sometimes we use that word, you know, but I think it's kind of loose when we, oh, well, we created this. No, actually, we, we kind of uh, maybe came up with something, but we did not create because everything that we are using to make things, God had already, you know, made that, created that already. And so this word creation is a uniquely divine word. Only God creates. So that's really important. There's another faith in our dimension to this very first verse. Just one verse. And you see how, you know, how many things we're drawing out of this one verse. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. The fifth point is that God is mysterious. God is a mystery. And that is why we can only know God through God's own self-revelation. And thank God for Jesus Christ who came to reveal God to us. Amen. And so God's mystery Amen. is captured in this one verse because that Hebrew word that we translate God is Elohim and Elohim is actually a plural word uh, and so it's, it's like God God somehow even though it's God it's Elohim and then that Elohim is used with a singular kind of subject but it's still plural in the beginning, God. And when you think about it, the mystery is this. Maybe, Pastor Mike, that is the kind of the foundation for our Trinitarian idea that Elohim, God in some way, some multiple way, is there for us. And so when we say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, which actually becomes very clear in the New Testament, we find it right here in this verse. In the beginning, Elohim, plural. The im is plural in Hebrew. In the beginning, God. So what is the author trying to tell us? Something mysterious about God. This God, or this plural God, created. And so that's something that we need to think <coughs> about as we go through all of this. It's a very interesting word. Yes, I, think it's, I think it's important to understand that it's a it's a plural form, but it's not the word gods. No, it it's that's what makes this mysterious. Yes. Is that the Hebrew uses the plural, but it uses it singularly. Right. The God. Yeah. Created. Yep. The God, but it uses a plural. It's so plural. that's like what? Huh? It doesn't make sense, but huh? it's on purpose. It's not an accident. Yep. They're not just really bad at grammar. No, they are. They they are saying God is one, mm -hmm. and so that's what makes it so vitally important to understand. And uh, uh, that that, that yeah. this isn't talking about more than one God. Right. It's talking about one God. Right. But a many faceted God, maybe is a is a different way to say it. Right. Or like you said, Pastor Daniel, the Trinity, because what we find in later scripture. Mm -hmm which we're going to talk about more in a minute, is it says uh, when John, mm -hmm. the Apostle John, talks about this, refers back to this, right. he says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right. and all things came existent through the Word. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Word became flesh. So we know Jesus right. is part of creation, which uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. Right. I don't want Thank to get you. too far. <laughs> and so talking about this plural, which is one kind of, one word God, again, in Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 6 and verse 4, which is what we call the Shema, every Jew recites this, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4, and it actually affirms what we're just talking about, the mystery of God. How could this God who is one still be, you know, captured in this plural now? And so the um, author in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6 and verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, 
the Lord is one. And then he goes on to talk about love the Lord with all your heart. And so God is one. And yet in Genesis 1 and verse 1, in the beginning Elohim created. That, that, that is really you know mysterious. And so it all goes to show how our God is so big, how we cannot capture God with our finite mortal minds, even though we try. And I think we should come to God with all humility to accept that we are finite. God is infinite. You know, we're limited. God is limitless. All these are things that we're going to talk about uh, as Pastor Mike, uh, you know, takes us to you know, Colossians 1. And then there's also uh, another sixth point that I find very, you know, uh, intriguing about this verse. That God is the creator of heaven and earth. God made heaven and earth and then all the things that are kind of, you know, on the earth and uh, in between. And so... God made this expanse. And I think as Roger read for us, you can see uh, a little bit of what God was doing as he created, and then he brought all these things, you know, um, about. And so God does not just modify pre-existing matter, but he calls matter into being out of nothing. And so we say in the Hebrew, God created out of nothing because before matter came, God was there. Uh, and we need to understand the people who are saying, mm, well, you know, Jesus couldn't be born because if Jesus is God, then he couldn't have been born because this whole thing about matter, it's, it's evil. The world that we see around us, you know, everything is tainted. The grass, you know, uh, the trees, everything. So matter is not really good. Well, before we run too fast, we've got to understand God made it. God made this world, everything on earth and also uh, in heaven. And before anything was actually, um, um, you know, uh, anything came into being, God was uh, already there. It, uh, it yeah. distinguishes kind of what you said before, Pastor Daniel, and that is that we can make stuff, mm -hmm. but we make stuff out of stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. When we create things, we create things out of existing things. Right. See the difference? Oh, yeah. There's God created out of nothing. There was nothing. That's why, it, you know, when it says the, the world, you know, in that first verse, right. the world was void and, and formless. Right. And darkness covered the, the deep. It, it, there wasn't anything. And then God called it into existence from nothing. Uh, we, we say ex nihilo, right. uh, which is the uh, Latin, kind of the Latin way to right. say it. And uh, it, it's out of nothing. <laughs> Only God can do that. Right. Back to that right. one point. Right. Only God creates. We make stuff mm -hmm. out of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we can't make something out of nothing. Yeah. Right? But God did. Right. This is makes it a divine thing as opposed Absolutely. to a human thing. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, the psalmist gives us some, uh, again, some um, affirmation about this in Psalm 33 and verse 6. And then I also read verse 9. Psalm 33 and verse 6, which you have in your notes. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. They are starry host by the breath of his mouth. And so by God's word, the heavens and everything that we see came into being. In verse 9, for he spoke and it came to be. I like this one. He commanded and it stood firm. When God's word goes out, it doesn't return void. It accomplishes what God has actually spoken uh, into being or spoken to be accomplished. And so this is really an uh, uh, interesting fact. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Let me read that you know, quickly. Um, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Again, mm -hmm. to add to the point which uh, we just, you know, in other words, God made this world out of nothing. nothing. Isn't that interesting? Is, you know, doesn't that tell you something about the God we serve? A God who makes something out of nothing. Something that we cannot do. You see, that is why this whole thing, it's uniquely divine. Because again, to go back to what has just been said, we make things out of something. But God makes things out of nothing. And that should set all this apart. And then finally, 
God is not dependent on the universe, but this universe depends on God. We depend on, you know, the things in this world. I mean, if we didn't have trees and, you know, stones, we cannot build. We can have this comfortable building to live in. But God can make things out of nothing. And so we depend on what God has made. God doesn't depend on the things that he's made because God is beyond creation. Doesn't that blow your mind away? I, I think it's really important for us to, to understand what we're talking about. It's so deep. Sometimes we don't think deeply about these things. But, you know, just that one verse calls our attention to the uniqueness of the God that we serve. Mm -hmm. A God who can take something from nowhere and makes it into something. And so let me just bring this to a, a close. I think one of the things that we also learn about this um, verse is that in the beginning marks some sort of inauguration of something. In the beginning. And so if there is a beginning, then we should have the anticipation for something that will also happen at the end. And so if beginning, there's a beginning, there's an end. There's, a, there's an end. Now what does that tell you about what we need to do here. If God is coming, if there's going to be an end, then we've got to be careful what we do. Because mm -hmm. as Paul says, one day we will all be called to the judgment seat of God. We will give an account of what we've, you know, what we've done. But just let me uh, round this up so that Pastor Mike will have some time to help us understand other things. You know, as Roger read for us, at every time when God created, he said, you know, we read about two times and it was good. And it was good. We read one uh, when we saw what God has made uh, in verse uh, 10. Uh, God saw that, you know, what he's made and it was good. In verse 12, we saw that what God has made uh, is good. But when we get to verse 31 of Genesis 1, Genesis 1 verse 31, God, this is after making everything, six days. And so, God saw all that he had made. And it was exceedingly, or it was very, very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And so, after God has done everything, God looked back what he's done and God said it was very, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, God made us good. In fact, he made us very, very good. Mm -hmm. Sin came and marred or tempted this good thing that God has made. But thanks be to God that one day, soon and very soon, in fact, he's already doing it through Jesus. This thing that was made very good and somehow hijacked by sin is going to be restored and is going to be very good again. And that's why I'm a believer. That is why I'm a Christian. Because, you know, God makes only good things. God makes only very good things. Sin is just here to destroy. But sin cannot destroy what God has made. The devil attempts, he tries, but he cannot. Because only God can make. Only God can dismantle. Nobody. And so, Pastor Mike, I guess you take us into what God did through Jesus Christ to help us understand what, what we're you know, talking about. I just want to read uh, a little bit of Psalm 136. If you have your Bibles, just turn with me. I just want to read a couple of verses from Psalm 136. It's a very beautiful psalm, and it takes... You know, the reader through all what God has made, this whole thing about creation, and it's so powerful. And anytime I read it, it really, you know, takes me back to this whole thing about the creation of God. In fact, Psalm 136, it's uh, 26 verses, but I'm not going to read all of it, but I just want you to kind of get a picture of what is going on. The psalm is best out into this song of praise. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And then the refrain, his love endures forever. You see, the first thing, what we're talking about is God's good world. Genesis 1, God is good. 
And so this is very important. And so the psalmist actually begins Psalm 136 with that. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, abundantly good. And then give thanks to the God of gods. <laughs> give thanks to the Lord of lords. For to him alone does great wonders. Who by his understanding made the heavens. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. Who made great lights. You see, the psalmist is really just replicating the creation account. Mm -hmm. And then he bursts out saying, his love endures forever. Thank God for Jesus who is the creator. Pastor Mike, help us understand that. Well, I also want to talk about the fact that when we talk about creation, especially when... Uh, I think, by the way, you need to keep these notes tonight and those seven points that, that Dr. Daniel uh, shared with us about creation because those are the most important things about the creation story. The creation story is that God created us. And, and that's the important thing. Isn't it true, we all know, that sometimes people get wrapped around the axle about, mm -hmm. about how creation happened and how did God create it. Now, the scripture says, how, 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 did, how long did it take God to create it? Seven, six, six days. days. Six days. Six days, and the seventh day he rested. All right? And uh, because of science, right or wrong or whatever, mm -hmm. science says it took a bazillion years. Each, each one of those days was a bazillion years and all that kind of stuff. Okay? Uh, and you can get into arguments about all those details and everything like that, but here's the question I want to ask. When we talk about creation mm -hmm. is... How big is your God? Okay, because you know what? I believe not only in a God who could do it in six days, I believe a God who could do it in six minutes. Wow. There you go. Okay? Yeah. If, uh, and I, I uh, but, but the, conversely, it's also true. I, could, I believe in a God who could do it in a million years. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Scripture says morning, evening, a day. I don't have any problem with that. No. Okay? And we shouldn't either. Mm -hmm. And, that's not the point. No. The point of Genesis chapter 1 is God did it. Amen. You know? That's it. And, you know, we could, so I've had people ask me, Pastor Daniel, that, you know, do you believe in the Big Bang Theory? I say, yeah, I believe in the Big Bang Theory. Sure. I believe God said it and bang, it was there. There you go. You I know? Like that. That's the Big Bang Theory I believe in. <laughs> and and, and that's, that is it. Yeah. I know that God created the heaven and yeah, the earth. Yeah. That's that's what I know. Well, they want to get in the weeds. They want to talk yeah, about yeah. it. They want to get in the science lab and, and talk about this kind of stuff. First of all, I believe in the most important, the greatest scientist of all time. Yeah. The greatest scientist of all time. I believe what he says is true. And you know who the greatest scientist of all time is? Lord. What? The Lord. That's right. It's God. Yeah. He's the greatest scientist of all time. Mm -hmm. I love science, by the sure. way. Science and Scripture... They, they, they live in harmony. You know why? Because God's the ultimate scientist. Amen. You know? Any, anything, much of our science is theories and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff, mm -hmm. and it's great. Hypotheses. We, we get <laughs> hypotheses, <laughs> but we get medicines and we get things, and I love science, and we discover new things, uh, new things to us. Great, great, great. But there is one scientist that's above all other scientists, and that's God. Science doesn't scare me. No. So I, they can't, they're can't. they not going to find anything that rocks my world no. because I have a big God. See, how about you? How big is your God? So w we need to think about those kind of things. And the point of the story is that this is God through his word is revealing to us that he started it all. Yeah. Now, can I, I, I just want to make one more sure, point about the, the fact that God created things good. Mm -hmm. Okay? He created things good. Not necessarily complete. Sure. Okay? Now, follow, follow me here. Okay? God created the heavens and the earth, and he, they, he created them good. The goodness comes because the creation reflects the character of the creator. Wow. The image of God. You see what I'm saying? So, goodness comes because we're created by him. We're his handiwork. In fact... You fast forward from that Psalm 136 to Psalm 139, mm -hmm. and it says that you formed, for you formed my inward parts, mm -hmm. in verse, 139, uh, verse 13 of 139, Psalm. Mm -hmm. For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb, mm -hmm. and I praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. Friends, I'm going to tell you this, 
and I, I'm going to tell you right out of the authority of God's word that each one of us is created. God didn't create every human being in the beginning. But he created you in your beginning. <laughs> so when, if you go into your own little Bible world and who you are, your history, you go, well, in my beginning, you follow me? In my beginning, God created me. In my mother's womb, the psalmist says, knitted me together. I love that verse especially because the Hebrew is talking about, it's, it's actually says, when it says we're his handiwork, his, he knitted us together, it says that we're the finger work of God. The Hebrew word is, you're the finger work. I love that. You know? It's, it's like, God didn't even use a tool when he made you. He created you with his own hands, his own fingers. You know, the fingerprints of God are all over you. Fingerprints of God are all over you. He created you in your mother's womb. This is this is great. But you see, so creation, did it stop in Genesis chapter 1, no. verse 1? No. Creation keeps on going. Sure. It's not totally complete. And how about God created trees? What did trees do after they were created? Die. What? Well, they die and then they... Well, let's, yeah, let's be they, sad they, about they, it. Yeah, they, they die. Let's, how about in between dying there, uh, Sam? What, what do they do? They grow. Get seeds. Uh, okay, that's what Genesis talks about. That's what Genesis talks about. It doesn't talk about trees dying. Thank you very much that though trees do die. But, but in, in Genesis chapter 1, it says, and the trees grow and they bear fruit and seed and reproduce. Okay? So, they're not complete. You see what I'm saying? How creation was good mm. and also growing. Sure. God created things. He created life. Do you understand? Life moves. It changes. It grows. It reproduces. Mm. That's what God created. I think there's something to be said about how cool God is yeah. and how wonderful God is yeah. in the fact that He doesn't just create something that's static. Mm. He creates stuff that grows and multiplies mm. and reproduces. That's how God creates. You know, this is a very interesting point, and I think we don't have much time, though, but this is what science has been talking about, you know, mutations and all of that. And it's, But you see, you're, you're right. That's really the biblical, you know, the trees reproduce. And, you know, so really it's not anything different from what God already made. You know, and yet we come up with these scientific terms to confuse us. And then to make us look so kind of sophisticated, if you like. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I, we just need to understand that God created, and he not only created just for no reason, he did create with a, and created with design. Right. Design and purpose. Because that psalmist goes on to say that all my days were planned before I ever even lived a one of them. Before I even drew breath in this world, you had my days already planned out. You, he gifts each of us. We talk about spiritual gifts. He, mm -hmm. he creates each of us uniquely and individually to do great things for him and his kingdom work. This is incredible stuff. God creates for a reason, with a purpose, and a design. He is the master designer. Amen. He doesn't just make stuff. He makes stuff with purpose. That's, that's the difference between a, just a creator and a designer. I've designed this. And he has a design for this world. He has a design for life. You you think, well, does he really? Yeah, read in Genesis 1. We just read it. Roger just read it. It said he created trees, the trees so that they would bear fruit, so the fruit would bear seed, so the seed would bear fruit of its own kind. You see? It didn't it, there was a plan. There was a process. And we and so on and so on. And we could just keep on rolling on with the process mm -hmm. of creation. And it's so vitally important that we understand that God has a design. Because let's fast forward to us thousands of years later. Here we are. God created you. Well, if God created you, we already know how he creates things. He creates things with purpose and design. So, Genesis 1 also shows us that God loves us, mm -hmm. He made us, yeah. and He has a design for us. Yeah. How do I know that? Genesis 1, as well as throughout the whole scriptures. But Genesis 1 tells me that. It's not just the creation 
of the very first things in the world. It's not just the creation of Eden. It's the creation of all of us. Right. And it shows how God does it. Right. How he creates things with a purpose. And he takes care of it. Mm -hmm. And he creates it good. Right. And he not only creates it good, he creates it good and so that it can continue to grow and reproduce. This is the design of God. Amen. So, it, knowing all that, then what's our problem? <laughs> Wait a minute. If God, okay, bingo. George already shouted it out. He said sin, for those of you who are uh, uh, watching on Facebook. S sin. There, there's something, there, a monkey wrench or something got thrown into the business because God created, he created everything good. What happened? Well, what? Adam and Eve. <laughs> Adam and Eve happened. <laughs> well, okay. We're going to talk about that next week. We're going to un unwrap that and get, it, get into it. But let's just talk in generalities now. What happened? Because the world, obviously, we would look at the world today and we'd say, everything's not good. Mm. Okay. Did, did that does it change what what changed what what happened and and what happens is we talk about it in sin and when sin comes into the world when rebellion comes into the world when god's design is not followed when there is a rebellion when there is disobedience when god's word let there be light because god spoke things through his word when his word is ignored when it's all of a sudden creation reverses it, it, uh, an author writes decreates you know like disintegrates mm -hmm. so he I don't know if that's actually a word I think that author made up <laughs> that word up, yeah. <laughs> decreates like it disintegrates right. when we stray from God's plan mm. li life disintegrates it, mm. it decreates mm. right. we go reverse Down. when when, when God's will and his word are, and his design are not followed, for example, in the family, then the family disintegrates. It becomes, you know, light becomes dark, order becomes disorder, uh, families become unraveled. You, you know, we, 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 we fall into bondage to addictions, and here we are. Right? People, uh, there, this is not a mystery what's happened in our world. Gosh, where did we go wrong? Are you kidding me? I can tell you where we went wrong. Genesis chapter 3. You know, where we go wrong is when we go away from God's design. Because in Genesis chapter 1, everything's good. And the only thing that happened between 1 and 3 is rebellion and walking away from God's design. And that's still where it is today. You understand? When we walk away from God's word, when we remove God, and Daniel said it a little earlier, Pastor Daniel, you said if, if God was to pull out of this world, it would just fall to pieces. It would just fall. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You pull God out, there's no life. You pull God out, it's like letting the air out of the balloon. It's dead. It can't fulfill its purpose. It, it, it's, it goes into destruction. So what I want you to do in these last few minutes of our time together is I want you to turn to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Now, this is just one example, mm -hmm. all right? One example because this is spoken of many times. We even referred to it already once in that um, we talked about... How in John chapter 1, the Apostle John said, In the beginning... Now, at, by the way, he didn't say that by accident. No. John chapter 1, verse 1. Sure. John starts out, the Gospel of John, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay? When he said that, he, he was a good Jew. All right? Knew the Bible really well. And he was talking, writing it to Jews... Jews, when he said, in the beginning, what do you think everybody thought of? God. Yeah. They thought about Genesis 1-1. Mm -hmm. this is, this, I'm, I'm, it's not a trick question. <laughs> he, when he said, in the beginning, just like if I say, in the beginning, you think of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Sure. So, they were likewise. They thought of it. He said, in the beginning was the Word, mm -hmm. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right. And everything came into being through the Word. 
That's the creation. See, he's obviously talking about the creation. We're not turning to it because we don't have that time. And then later down in verse 14 of chapter 1 in John, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Okay? Anyone you want to attempt that? Not a trick question. What's that? Jesus. Okay, it's God's ultimate revelation. It is God's clearest revelation of who God is. The word is the written the Bible is the written revelation of God to us, and Jesus is God in the flesh revealed to us. The clearest form of who God is. You, God's, it's, uh, you've heard me say it a bunch of times. It's God's ta-da moment. He's like, you want to know who I am? Ta-da, this is who I am. This is what it looks like. Here I am in the flesh. Okay? That's, that's John chapter 1, verse 14. But in Colossians, Paul writes about the creation and Jesus' part in it. And he does it most clearly here than anywhere else. And like I said, there's plenty of places like in John and other places that talk about Jesus being part of creation. And the Elohim, right. you know, that whole thing. But, but listen to this. In Colossians chapter 1, we're going to look at verse 15 through 18. Just those few verses. All right? It's talking about Christ. The Apostle Paul is talking about Christ. And, and he's talked about the fact that they have been forgiven through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that they have been redeemed mm -hmm. through a relationship to Him. Right. And then he goes into saying this, because, all right, verse 15, He is the image of the invisible God, mm -hmm. the firstborn of all creation. For by Him all things were created. Do you all hear that? Yep. Who, who created us? Jesus. Jesus, God, mm -hmm. Jesus. It says, by Him all mm -hmm. things were created. So you see now the Elohim, it kind of explains that, you know, that whole plural thing, because it's God the Father, the Creator, and we now we know Jesus was there and creating. He wasn't just there, like watching, hey, good job, whoa, way to go, Dad, you know? No, 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 no. But see, we think simplistically like that. We separate things out. And so we've, we've got three gods standing there. Mm. God the Father, God the Son, mm. and God the Holy Spirit. No wonder people think we worship more than one God. Right. No, He's one. He's one God. And if you doubt it, here it is. He is the image of the invisible God, it says. Firstborn of all creation, for by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Even things you can't see, God created. You say, I didn't know that existed. So, God created it. The things you don't even know, that you can't even see, God created them. Stars that are way far out, too far for you to see in a telescope, God created them, those too. He, he just, God created everything. Invisible, in, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created Oh, listen to this. Hmm. Are you there? Is Are you guys following along? Okay, all things were created. What does it say? Through him and... Say it out loud. What? No. For him. That's different. It's, he all, we already said it was created by him. Now it says it's through him and for him. So why were... Okay, let's... I, I mean, I talk to, I, I get to, we, both Daniel and I get to do a chapel for our preschoolers. Three years old, four years old, and we talk about how God created them, and we'll say, you know, who created the grass? God. Who created, who created people? God. Well, I'm a people, you're a people, who created you? And they say, God. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot of, you know, it doesn't take a college education to know hmm. God created us, Okay. So let me ask you a question that I would ask them. If everything, it says here, all things, okay, I'm, I'm an all thing. Are you all things? It, all things were created through him and for him. So who were you created for? Verse 20, you said that. Is that a verse 20, by the way? 16. 16. 16. 16. We're looking at the Colossians 1, 16. Yeah. Yeah, verse 16, the tail end of 16. So, the answer is Jesus. You're created for mm -hmm. Jesus. Okay? You're not created for you or for somebody else. You're created for Him. Now, think about that. 
You think about that. It's incredible. You he knitted you together in your mother's womb. We saw that in Psalm one thirty nine. Mm-hmm. He made you. Yeah, everybody. God made me. Okay, and he made you with a purpose and a design. Yep, everybody says that. You know what that is? You made for Jesus. Okay, so if you run from Jesus, mm. Mm. you're running from God. Mm. You're running from God. You're running from your whole purpose, the whole reason you were exactly. created, because exactly. you were created for Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. if you are going to fulfill everything that you were created mm-hmm. for, what has to happen between you and Jesus? Reconciliation. There you go. Mm-hmm. Reconciliation. You got to get with Him, because you know why? You're created for Him. Mm-hmm. Dennis, you're created for Jesus. Amen. You through Jesus, you were created through Him, and for Him. Because you're all things, like me. What? What? So now, let's re- rewind a little bit. What's wrong with our world? What's wrong with our world is... We're running everybody. away from God. We're running away from God. From we forgot who we were created for. We thought we were created for us. <laughs> so we're just living on our own stuff, you know? I don't need anybody else. I'll put my own... I, whoa, whoa. No, you were created for you were created for Jesus. Let me keep keep reading, just because I said I was only going to read a few verses, and I'm and I'm sticking to it. Mm-hmm. And He is before all things. Mm-hmm. That's again. What this is just so powerful. Sure. We could pause on everything. It, and it, so through Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and to and in Him all things hold together. Okay, anybody seen this world falling apart? Anybody ever said, oh gosh, these families are falling apart or this world's falling apart or what's going to fall? You know who holds it all together? Who holds it together? Jesus. 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 Okay, this is this is preschool stuff. All right? But people read this and they just, they don't get it. What's not to get? He holds all things together. And he is the head of the body, the church. Okay, who's the boss of the church? Is it the, is it the pastor? No. No. Sorry, pastors. Sorry, Pastor Mike, you're not the boss. Mm. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, in that everything, that in everything, he might be preeminent. Now, that is, you could keep reading. You got to just read this whole chapter. Sure. It, it, you'll just, whew, I, it, it'll take you a while just to even get over it. Just reading it one time. But we're stopping there because. The point is, Jesus is first. Amen. He was the first. And He's not only the first one who in creation who created you, but guess what? He also saw that we were going away, that we were decreating, and that this world was getting away from Him and no longer fulfilling the design that He wanted, that it was no longer figuring out it didn't know that it was for Him. You were created for Him. And there was this big rift. Right. And it's called sin and rebellion. So what do you think happened? Well, we all had to get back with God. No, you can't find your own way out. It's like beating your way out of a paper bag and you can't do it. You're not there. You're in the dark. You can't see where you're going. You need help. Somebody help me. I need something. I need a Savior. And then all of a sudden, the light comes on. And Jesus came. And God came to us. He rode in. He was our Calvary. And He came to Calvary for you and me. And He took our sins and He made sure that we could remember that we were for Him. And He said, you were created for me and I'm not letting you go. And He did the work that brought us back into the kingdom. He did that. He redeemed us through His blood. Mm -hmm. So not only did He create you, and give and 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 allow you to grow. You, he he loved you so much. You we then we wandered, but he loved us so much that he can he created yep. the way to come back to him. In fact, somebody said God is recreating us. So if the other mm-hmm. author is saying decreate, God is recreating us. Did you like? Yeah. <laughs> what do they What do they say about What do they say? How do they talk about salvation? Born again. again. So. So you're created again. Yeah. All right. So what we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the weeds yep. on this with next, next week. week. Yep. Next week we're yep. gonna talk more about it. You know, uh, Ernestine was talking about those. You know what happened in Genesis three mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But we just got to remember that Jesus is the one that holds all things together. He is the one uh, that we cannot reject. 
he is the one that gives us the meaning that we have in life. Who is Jesus? Oh man, he's everything that you need. And by the way, I don't, not a spoiler, <laughs> but Pastor Daniel is going to bring a sermon that will knock your socks off this Sunday morning, right out of Colossians, about how Jesus is everything that you need. Amen. So let's let's should we, can we can we pray and just draw this to a close and then uh, we'll good study, up. good study. You know, time just runs out, and you know, but let's just pray together and then uh, thank you for uh, just uh, giving us this excitement, Father. We thank you for your word the 